Yeah, I mean, I think that was a that was a good test for us. Obviously, across the board, they had good players in their defense. Obviously, everybody knows about um, Nassib and Zettel being really good players. Um, I think it was a challenge we were ready for. Uh, we were excited for it as a whole unit. Um, and I think you know having that challenge um, and that high level competition made us play better. Uh, so you know that that was a fun game, and you know it was kind of a good gauge for us is to are we improving and you know can we play at that level and I think we answered that question what did you see different about JT Saturday nothing really I mean JT has always been JT you know he comes in he does a really good job of running that read option um, you know the ends were crashing hard on Zeke because you know we were able to pop some runs there, through there with Zeke and um, you know he's just he's just pulling making good cuts running the ball well uh, just running the offense smoothly um, so I don't think anything is different with JT. I mean, he obviously got more snaps than he's got, but it's, you know, to me, it's the same old JT. Taylor, when you have four of the linemen named as champions this week against guys like you said, like Nassib and Zettel, high rank guys, does that mean a little more when you're playing against guys like that and still great out as a champion? Okay. Uh, yes and no. Um, you know, I think around here we're expected to play at that level week in and week out. Um, you know, obviously it's more difficult against a higher level of competition, but uh, you know, we're recruited here and we were brought here because we are some of the best players that there are. Um, so I think um, you should be able to play at that level regardless of who you're playing against. Um, yeah, it is more challenging, but you know I think that's kind of the expectation. I think that is expected of us. Coming out of Penn State a year ago compared to this year, uh, what's the difference in feeling of where you guys are at as a unit and you particularly? Uh, mentality, confidence-wise, is there any difference? I mean, I think we're farther along than we were uh, this time last year. Um, you know, everybody, you know, there's there's always going to be a ton of questions and everything, especially people are gauging us off those last three games. But I, I think we are farther along than when we were. Um, obviously, I think there's more chemistry because we've had a continuity of guys at the same positions. Um, you know, so I think we're in a good position right now uh, going into the last stretch of our season. Taylor, you said you guys answered questions with your play. Um, for those of us with microphones, it would also help if you could answer those questions with words. Where do you think the <laughs> the offense is? What is the statement that you made? Uh, just that we're improving, and then uh, you know we're a capable offense. I think I think we have been honestly playing well. I think the the issues were turning the ball over and penalties. Um, and like I said, you know, I think we are farther along this time than last as compared to last year. Um, so, you know, I feel good about, you know, the way we played. I feel good about, you know, the direction we're heading. Um, so I think, you know, we got one more game against Rutgers, night game. It's going to be a, a good atmosphere, I'm sure. And then, you know, we're going to have that bye week to get guys healthy and get kind of rested up going into, uh, you know, some tough games at the end of the season. So which was more true, that we were judging you too harshly or that you guys have taken a big step forward? Um, I think we have taken steps forward week to week. Um, you know, we've had some some trip ups there, but um, you know, I, I I don't think it's fair to hold us. I mean, obviously we don't want to be at the high standard, but everybody's going to say, oh, well, why can't you play like you guys did against Wisconsin last year every week? Um, you know, we play against good teams. You know, they have scholarship players too, um, and. There are other good teams out there. It's not like Ohio State's the only good team. Um, so, like I said, I think you know we are improving, um, and you know that's. I'm just happy with that. I'm happy with the direction we're heading. Rutgers is kind of a dangerous team. I mean, they beat Michigan there last year, and they took Michigan State all the way down to the last play a couple weeks ago. There, mm -hmm. just uh, I don't know if you've studied them individually, but they've got some pieces on defense. But just going in there. You know, eight weeks into this and ready for that bye week mm -hmm. and coming off an emotional win. Is there some on guard here this week with Rutgers, or what do you think? Uh, definitely. I know uh, from an offensive line standpoint, going into the game last year, uh, you know, they were one of the top teams in the country as far as like sacks and tackles for loss was concerned, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, so, you know, like I said, every team does have good players, and, um, you know, maybe their record doesn't reflect their ability. Um, and obviously, they, they scheduled it as a night game. So, uh, you know, number one team in the country is coming into town. They're going to schedule a night game. I'm sure they're going to be ready to go. Um, you know, they're going to want to prove a point. Um, and I think we'll be ready for that.
Taylor, how curious are you? you you've never played at High Point Solution Stadium, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> how curious are you <laughs> to, see a new, to see a new place? I mean, to see a new stadium, or do you have time to, like, sort of, for example, for one of another word, take in the sights? I mean, a little bit. I mean, do you, do you give yourself that little luxury at some point in a trip like this? I mean, I do like playing uh, away games. I enjoy I enjoy the hostile environments and things like that. And it's always fun to play in new in new environments. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I do enjoy that. Obviously, I love home games because, you know, you, you have your home fans there and everything. And, and that's fun. And, you know, there's a comfort level to that. And, you're, you know, you're familiar with it. But there's also um, a part of me that enjoys going to somewhere I've never played before, going to a new hostile environment. Um, so, you know, I am excited to play in a new stadium. Did you, you may have been asked this a minute ago, I wasn't over right when it first started, but did you notice a difference in the way Penn State was coming after you guys when JT was in the game, meaning knowing he had that option threat, knowing he had the run threat and stuff? Did they, what did you notice that was different? And did it feel sometimes like last year a little bit to you when things were clicking? Yeah, well, um, I, I said earlier, the thing with JT is he did a really good job of pulling on the read option. Uh, they were crashing on Zeke hard because earlier in the game we were able to pop some runs through there. Mm -hmm. um, when JT got in the game, he was able to pull it and run it effectively. Um, and he does a really good job at that. I think that's one of his strengths. Um, so then they were going to have to honor that, and then we were able to hand it off. And, you know, Zeke was popular, so it's, it's kind of a, a two-headed monster with them two back there. And y'all got the ball back with 10 minutes left after your defense had stopped them, you know, and y'all mm -hmm. went clickety-clack, as I call it, down the track there with that, that one drive. I mean, okay. what was it like to, to, to have a drive like that in that kind of game that sort of like put the game away? What, is, what does it do for everyone, I guess, to have from an offensive standpoint? I mean, I think we just need to have the ability to do that uh, – when, when we're going to be playing close games because yeah. uh, the level of competition just keeps getting higher and higher. Um, so you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to have long drives where you take time off the clock, keep your defense off the field. And, uh, you know, I think that's just part of playing a complete game. You know, if the defense gets a stop and, you know, w you know we got to drive 80 yards, you know, take five, seven minutes off the clock, we have to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, that's what great teams are supposed to be able to do. Um, and I know that we can do that, and I think we showed that we can do that against, you know, one of the top defenses in the country. And the other thing, how important is it for a captain who is a captain to be playing? I mean, if you, how important is it for JT to be part of the mix, in your opinion? Um, I don't really like that question. Yeah. Um, but I mean, J JT is a captain because of the type of person he is, and you know, the way he goes about his business. Um, you know, it's not for me to say who should be playing, who shouldn't yeah. be playing. Um. You know, obviously the coaches think that he should be getting playing time because they're putting him on the field. Um, you know, aside from that, that's not for me to say. Let me attack it from this angle. He got three quarters against Northern Illinois and couldn't take the job that day. He didn't play very well. A month later, it seems like he's back into a flow, back into a rhythm, looking more like the guy we saw last year. In your mind, is that is that the JT Barrett you're seeing now? Uh, yeah. I mean, like like I said, I don't. You know, JT's JT to me. I don't think anything's. Anything's changed. I think he's always been the same person since he stepped on campus day one. Mm -hmm. uh, handled his business all the same. Very mature guy. Not a lot. Not a lot of guys come in the program and are like that. Um, and you know, that's just he's just a special type of person. And you know, those are the kind of performances we expect out of him. Hey, are, is Cardell handling this even better than you would have thought he would? The, the fact that we're still asking questions about the quarterback battle. Well, I mean, the thing about Cardell is he's incredibly confident in himself, even if, you know, other people are not. You know, I know he's there's a ton of scrutiny from, you know, media and everybody and fans calling for his head, um, but he's he's confident in what he can do, and obviously he has a ton of ability. We've seen that. Oh, we've seen it last year. We've seen flashes of it this year, um, and I think he understands that, you know, oh, we put this red zone package for JT, and he loves JT. You know, he wants he wants JT to do well, and vice versa. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's rare for that to happen, and I'm, I'm happy that that has happened because it's not creating a divide in the locker room, uh, which I think could be a, would be a downfall if that were to happen. I asked Joey Bosa's question a while ago, but I'm just going to ask you because you're a leader on the offense. Uh, is there a sense of this team uh, maybe 
moving more toward its peak now and stuff coming out of Saturday night, the way y'all played, especially in the second half with the game on the line and stuff. Uh -huh. what, what is the sense you have about this team that you didn't have a week ago or two weeks ago, Taylor? Um, I mean, you know, I just think the big thing is just to improve week to week, and I think we need to be playing our best football at the end of the year. Uh, you know, you look at years past, you know, you know, we were not going to be playing our best ball at the beginning of the year. That's just, you know, would we like to? Yeah, but that's just not how it works. You know, you're going to be coming out of camp. You're going to have to work out kinks. You're going to have injuries along the way, new guys stepping into new roles. Um, and I think we're, we're, we're getting towards that, you know. We're about to get over that hump, and it's going to start rolling downhill, and it's just going to be a snowball effect. Um, so, you know, like I said, I'm excited. You know, I'm excited that we've taken steps, and, you know, if some guys have shown maturity and shown improvement and – Above all else, there's a positive mindset around here. You know, nobody's pointing fingers. Um, you know, we're just working every day to get better, which is the biggest thing. How's Chase Ferris been this year? Uh, you guys, you talked earlier about the continuity of the line. He's the only new starter on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about his performances lately? Um, I think, you know, at times he plays really well. I think he does a lot better in the run game uh, than in the pass. Um, and I think, you know, a little bit of his issue at times just might be overthinking things. Um, you know, obviously he's a first-time starter. He's worked really hard for it to be in the position that he's in. And I think, you know, sometimes he just overthinks it instead of just going out there and playing. Um, have I seen Chase in practice be dominant at, in every phase of the game? Yeah. Am I still confident in him? Yeah. Um, but I just think he just needs a level of comfort in there in the games. And, you know, th you know that'll come. You know, that's just something that has to be worked out. And he had a very tough matchup on Saturday. How good was the Yeah. Basketball? I mean, you know, the I mean, obviously, you know, he was 6-7 and you know, he was he was a long athlete. Um, but the biggest thing with him is he, you know, he he just played really hard. You know, that's what you saw on film. Um, it's not like he was going to blow you away with a speed rush or anything like that, not to take anything away from him. Um, because, you know, obviously everybody knows he's went from a walk on not playing to being a starter leading the country in sacks. Um, you know, so that's that's pretty remarkable by him. But he was just a really high effort guy that was, you know, a long athlete. Um, and for Chase not being as tall of a tackle, you know, that length could can be difficult to deal with. But uh, you know, I think for the most part, he did a pretty solid job against him, uh, uh, considering, you know, how well uh, he was playing. Did you look up his height? Is that part of your scouting report, or did you yeah, just come I mean, across we, it? Was, I mean, we got height weights, everything on all of them. So you think yeah. it'll help Chase in the long run to? Have that. Yeah, I mean, one, I mean, one he goes against really good competition every day in practice, um, but that's not the same as going against it in the game. Um, you know, practice is practice, um, and we try to get it as close to a game as possible. But it's just, it's just not the same. It's not going to be the same. You need to be exposed to that and in a big time atmosphere and pressure situations. Um, and I think he'll learn from it. Uh, and. Maybe he's a little frustrated with, you know, a play or two here or there. But you know, it's just a learning experience. You know, I've I've had those, you know, early in my career. So uh, and it helped me a lot. So Taylor, it seems like Jamarco Jones has become almost like <coughs> the sixth man of the line. Mm -hmm. uh, he kind of filled in if uh, Chase is having a rough time or gets someone gets hurt or something like that. Yeah. He's moving around. Uh, how important does he provide depth? And uh, how important is depth to what you guys do? Um, I mean, I think for one, we've been really lucky around here where. We've pretty much always had this, the same starters. Yeah, knock on wood. Um, you know, we've not had too much of an injury bug uh, to where guys can't play, which, you know, that's awesome. Um, but we do need to have depth, and we don't really have a lot of it, um, which, you know, that's that's concerning, um, especially if something were to happen. Uh, but Jamarco, he, you know, he's, you know, this past off season, um, you know, myself, I was paired with him for every workout. You know, he's my workout partner because he needs to come along. Um, and he did a really good job of that, progressing physically. And uh, you know, his he's been playing better. Um, you know, one thing that I'd just like to see out of him is, you know, more consistency of uh, more consistency in practice as far as you know, practicing hard. You know, not everybody wants to go out there and every day and practice because you know, practice isn't always fun. But you just need to be a professional about it and you know, go out there every day and get better. Uh, I think. He's playing really well, but I think the sky's the limit for him as far as ability. Two more questions for Taylor. Who else would you guys lean on? That? I mean, if an injury were to happen, like you said, there's not. You have a lot of questions right there behind the starter, the starting five there. Um, besides Demarco, I mean, who else would be the guys you would look to to come in in, in a pinch situation? 
I mean, I think, you know, first and foremost, Jamarco would come in and we'd flip guys all around if we could. Um, I think he's our most reliable. Um, and then, you know, Evan Lyle in there and an interior guy, you know, he's just, he's just a tough, gritty guy. Um, you know, outside of that, I don't, I don't think we have a ton of depth. Um, and that's simply because not because they're not talented enough. Um, just their level of execution isn't there in practice. Uh, it's not that they can't do it. They just, they just need to show it in practice before people uh, be comfortable with them going in those situations. Um, and I know Coach Meyer, you know, one thing he said this week is he's going to challenge guys uh, going into this week and the bye week especially uh, to develop because, you know, you have to develop. Hey, Taylor, I've covered Last question. two Ohio State coaches who are pretty smart. Mm -hmm. And both of them said play calling and scheme are kind of overrated. Mm -hmm. Are they? Yeah, because at the end of the day, um, your, your great players have to play great. Um, you know, you look at a lot of our plays that may be negative yardage and things like that. You know, it's not, oh, you know, we were outnumbered here, we were outnumbered there. It's a, it's a guy missed a block. A guy didn't execute properly. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I think Coach Meyer said it multiple times. You know, you have to bring in good players and they have to play good. Um, you know, there's all types of different offenses, defenses, blitzes, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but at the end of the day, it all comes down to your execution and, you know, are your players going to play good when it matters?